Welcome back. Segment two of three segments. Yes, we it's are. like a three act play. Yeah, well, I, you write, you've written plays and screenplays and stuff. I you? have absolutely not written plays or screenplays or anything of the sort. I write little ditties, little songs. All right. Maybe next time I hear, well, ding a ding a ding. Well, this next ditty is part two. There you go. Yeah. I talk about energy all the time in there. As a matter of fact, I have this thing called chuckle chatter. Do you? Have, do, uh, what is chuckle chatter? I have guided laughitation and chuckle chatter. It's basically to shift your consciousness. I should use it more on the golf course when we're golfing together. But yeah, you should. You get a little <laughs> angry. <laughs> 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 well, it's funny you should say that. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this. I was club champion two years ago. Are you? Serious? I know. I'm the same guy that sucks now. You were club champion two years ago. And I'll tell you ago. how it happened. I'm, I'm on the wall. I'm on the plaque. I got to go take a look at this. Yeah. So go yeah. take a look. I was on my way there, and I did this. It's called guided lapidation. And what you do is you laugh out loud, and you say out loud some of the obstacles that are getting your way. Mm. I'll do the one that I did on the way to the finals. It's seven months long, this takes, you know, yeah. to, to win this thing. And, and I'm, you know, I, my, I played in a celebrity golf tournament. I got a trophy for closer to the car. That's how bad I am. <laughs> They have, they have special <laughs> needs tees for me. I mean, it's so bad. And you've been there. You've seen me. And right. I, you've also seen me pretty good. Yes. And also just, just go downhill. Yeah. Well, this this time, I just had a different perspective. I, I stopped. And a lot of it comes from poverty, believe it or not. I mean, I showed up for the first time I ever golfed. This rich guy said, why don't you go out for the golf team? Just tell the teacher, the, the, the coach, you shoot in the 80s. I don't know what the 80s was. Right. Right? When you were right, growing right, right. up, did you know anything about golf? I, I didn't know anything about I the 80s. I thought you'd hit the guy in the truck yeah. on the driving range. I yeah. could do that, by the way. I, I have a motivation. I'm going to hit somebody. Sure. So And, <laughs> and I put it up the dinosaur's mouth on the putt-putt, and I'm good. Yeah. So I said, I'm, I'm fine. I shoot in the 80s. He goes, bring your spikes. And I showed up, and I wore baseball spikes. Okay. Right, and these rich kids were like, "You don't even come on the green when we're putting." So the, I had to wait till they were finished, right. and I was all over the place. I scored in like two hundred. I was like a two hundred or something. Sure. Like it was, it was the most miserable, shame-filled day of my life. I was where I had borrowed clubs that were like, you know, like frayed and stuff. They're right. wooden because they were my grandfather's. I stole them from my grandfather. <laughs> you know, I rolled up my pants to make them into knickers. And then the knickers, a little paint steward uh, action. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> trying to paint steward look, and go, oh, this will blend in with the rich kids. Mm -hmm. So on my way to this final of, at Calabasas, our country club, I started doing a lapidation. You can do it with me right now. Just breathe in and let out ha. Ready? Ha. Ah. See, you smile, yeah. releases healing enzymes, you become more relaxed, more relaxed. Right? Just do another one. Ha. Ah. Ah. Now let out. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that? Yeah. You yeah, feel yeah, it changes it. It changes everything. It changes it. Shifts it. your consciousness. Yeah. It puts you into mindlessness and, and putting meaning on everything. So this is what I did. I, I, th I what I added to it. The chuckle chatter is just that, and you say some simple things. But in the in the guided lapidation that I teach, you say out loud the thing, the obstacles that are really preventing you from happiness or glory or success. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it with you. So laugh along with me, right? <laughs> 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 My athletic career <laughs> is embarrassing. <laughs> I finally played in a celebrity softball game, slow pitch. I struck out in front of the whole stadium filled with people where the Phillies play. <laughs> <laughs> and the rich kids wouldn't let me play with them. Anyway, so I did that, right? And I take that could also come across as psychotic, though. That, yeah, but but I love that's, it. That's the thing about yeah. that's the thing about laughter. You're taking that. They and think you're switch. exactly. Yes. Like, oh, you're crazy. You don't act like a fool. Yeah, yeah I'll act like a fool. You're damn right. Because yeah. how do I feel right now? Right. I'll go conquer anything. Right. Because I now get to the meaninglessness. I put all this meaning on these kids. That shame me. Who they don't know who I am today. They don't care. 100%. Who cares? I, I got. Who cares? And now I played against these dudes. I mean, these are single-digit handicaps. You know, big giant guys just put just bolting it down the fairway. They put it in the water. They're all because they're all uptight because right. this this shitty golfer is beating them. Right. And I'm laughing. Oh, okay. Good enough. I was boop boop boop. That's it. And there I am on the plaque. Yeah. And it all came from the guy to lapidation because mm -hmm. I really put out loud. Those things that prevent me from my happiness. I totally buy it. Yeah. I absolutely Good. buy it. You thought it was nuts a couple seconds ago. <laughs> well, I was like, wow, this guy, listen, if you want to cry, cry, Craig, it's okay. You know? Um, but no, it, listen, that, that's so important. I, I think I think as a culture, we've kind of forgotten to laugh. You know, we all want to kind of judge, and we all like, yeah. even the stuff that's supposed to be fucking funny, yeah. we're uh, judging we, that too. We're judging that too. How it's about like, uh, Joe Coy hosting? Uh, 
Oh, my God. Everyone gets on him. You know, Look, the guy's out there trying to entertain you, okay? You, got, you, you don't got, like it, just shut up. Just don't say anything. Don't say anything. Right, what did our mothers used to say? If you got nothing nice to say, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Right? Like, yeah, it, it, my, my mom would never say, <laughs> she would drop an F-bomb. Well, my mother okay. thinks no, no, fart no, is mother, a bad word. Yeah, no, She's no, no, watching this right would. now. She's like, oh, my God. He sorry, comes. Mom. Sorry, so, Mom. Sorry, Barbara. <laughs> No. You'll meet her in a few weeks. Okay, my I, mom. I'm here. Yes. I'm in. But yeah, don't curse in front yeah, of my mom. I, I, I would never. Really? No, I probably, <laughs> I probably will. I, probably, I don't have a good censor button. You know, but, it, but that's the thing, by the way, with censorship. It's just so silly. Language yeah. is silly. Yeah. If I call you fnufna, in my yeah. language, that might be the worst F word I could call you, but right. it means nothing to you. Again, yeah. it's meaningless. That's what the laughing does. It gets yeah. to you to the point where you're, wow, I put a lot of pressure on myself there. Yeah. I'm putting so much on me of words and phrasing and you know intentions and all that if you have good intentions that's it that's it yeah you know i i always say people ask me for clarification if you have a problem with me because 100 percent of the time not 99 my intentions are good right my intentions are pure my intentions are kindness my intentions to hear you to feel you to love you that's my intention sure so if i'm short of that it's just my your interpretation because i'm from philly we talk different that's right that's right (laughs) Ooh, but yeah. I remember that. I remember my, we had that beautiful moment before this whole thing started. Well, they said, look at each other. And oh. Like, it's like Sling Blade. Yeah. They said it sounds like the Love Master. That's more Sling Blade. <laughs> <laughs> the Love yeah. Master, which is brilliant, by the way. If you haven't seen this man, go, go, go see his comedy. He's brilliant. Water, cold water, deep. <laughs> <laughs> remember that movie? Of course I remember that, that was movie. His, that was his breakout. Yeah. Because he was told no, Billy Bob Thornton, sure. for a long time. Sure. Very well known as an actor, like in the community, at acting classes like you attended in right. New York and right. stuff like that. There is a community of like you know, respect and wow, you should use this guy, but you just don't get the break. Right. That was his. That was his break. Yeah, and of oh, course, oh, that was more than a break. He broke it, and I mean, he was mm-hmm. amazing in that. You know, and I mean, there's so many uh, jobs, characters, things now that now they just have to go get the real. Right, like, because the acting side, uh, everybody just wants like the real thing that you don't really get to see a lot of these tour de force acting performances anymore. Because I know. you know they would have just went and found uh, a guy that's kind of like Billy Bob, who might have a little thing or a little way about him. But mm. like some of the old acting from the eighties and nineties and uh, before that, like you know, we've had we've we've got into this new space that people are trying to make the right choice. All the time, isn't it? Yeah, actor, you know? and there and there, there's too much support from outside forces like CGI, like mm-hmm. makeup and props and all yeah. that stuff. It's it's just not it's not as real. Yeah, you don't you don't buy it as much. Anymore, no, you know, like I'm not gonna buy it. Somebody flying in through my window. <laughs> it's yeah. just not gonna buy it. Yeah, yeah. That's it's it's fascinating to me how it's taken off and millions and millions of dollars are spent on these things. I'm like. Just give us a simple story. Simple stories, man. I can relate to. Yeah. Are there any movies out there like that anymore? I mean, just something I, I'm just going, man, I connect with this. Anatomy and of a Fall. Have you seen Anatomy no, of a Fall? I haven't. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous movie. Um, uh, just about relationships and two people and a family that gets broken apart. Uh, and really? it's just, And they're just words. But you know the words are so heavy and deep. They, these words actually mean something. Yeah. Right. Because you like you can you can destroy people with your words or you can lift them up or you can kind of guide mm. them or you can mislead them. Words are special, actually, yeah. when you decide to use them in the right way. Yeah. Right. Um, but Anatomy of a Fall is a great movie. We just watched Saltburn last night. Um, you know, we were talking about Napoleon earlier. I mean, there are still some movies, but these are still. I say Anatomy of a Fall because it was just a few locations and it was just a yeah. great story. And, and uh, you mentioned Napoleon. I haven't seen it yet, yeah. but. Uh, all the reviews I hear, it's, oh, the action's good, you know, okay. Yeah. You know, it, it, by the way, most of it's uh, anachronistic. It, it would not have, these explosions wouldn't have happened at that time. Right. That's what The way honestly. that they. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the special effects. They're special yeah. effects, and they're from now. They're yeah. not from then. That's no, because cannonballs don't do this. <laughs> 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 it's, like, it's, it's like, how does a cannonball just. <laughs> how's there a mushroom cloud yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. with this cannonball? It just doesn't make any sense, yeah. but it's all about. You know, desensitizing us yeah. as opposed to appealing to our senses again. Yeah. You know, listen. If you can do both, like a Gattaca, um, you know, the Jodie Foster film, or if you can do something hold on, like hold on. Gattaca, you don't know Gattaca. Where what, we're all what, supposed what, to be what, kind of the same. What, wait a minute, she wasn't. Jodie Foster wasn't in that. Yeah, Ethan Hawke, I thought was in that. No, no, no. I believe Jodie was in that. We're gonna have to look that up. Yeah, Where's my gonna, crack staff yeah, over here? Yeah, we're gonna have to look that up. 
Right, it's so right. funny that what you would use that. I use that term Gattaca all the time. When really? somebody's house is really clean and I'm afraid to be in the house, really? that I'm afraid to drop an eyelash, it's Gattaca. I'm pretty sure. You're the only is, one that knows this is, reference. Is someone looking this up? I thought, uh, it was, I thought it was not only him. It was his wife, Uma Thurman. I could have sworn that. Was, I no. have a reason for remembering this. Am, am I wrong? I went to the premiere of Gattaca. Am I wrong with Gattaca? What's is Jody e- in it? Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman. Is, I'm almost is, positive. Is I don't think Jodie Foster's in it. You're right. Uh, okay. Wait. Well, I love the reference, though. I'm okay. You got me on the Gattaca now. I'm okay with being wrong. <laughs> but like Avatar, Gattaca, some of these massive movies that were able to bring heart yeah. into it, because that's kind of where we're going. Sorry, Jody. I worked with Jody. We did flight plan together. By the way, speaking of that, I think she had her best performance of her career. Can you guess what it is? Very, 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 very recent. Can you guess what it is? True Detective. Also, a simple movie. Nyad. Yes. Nyad. Simple movie. Simple movie. And Annette Benning's best performance. Great story. We Unbelievable just wa- story. Uh, I have chills thinking about it. Yeah. What that woman went through and the, the relationship that wasn't, it was just so yeah. beautiful. And it was Jodie Foster's best yeah. underplayed performance of her life, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. That you, was you, just. You saw the movie? Sh- yeah, we totally saw it. Yeah. But that talk about recovering and being able and to turn around. get over failure because Oof. failure, I, I embrace failure. And as a soccer player, you have to be a little bit, um, you know, short-term memory. you got to have a bit of a Nemo brain as uh, I played up top, right? I played forward. You mean so. Dory from Nemo. Dory, yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean. No, I do. Uh, well, I'm explaining it for yes, them. Yes, Dory, She right? kept forgetting everything. Yes. and you The next to... time she met someone was the first time she exactly. met someone. Exactly. I have friends like that. And you shoot, <laughs> you don't score. Yeah, right? Yeah. You got to keep shooting. Yeah, gotta you got to just shooting. keep yeah. shooting because something's good going to happen. And if you ever start to get lost in that space of the failure, then listen, you can you can embrace it for a second, but don't stay there. Yeah. Right? Like I mean, just just let it happen and then let it mushroom into something else, you know, but yeah. you just can't stay. Be okay with it. Yeah. And be okay with it and don't attach yourself to the shame. I think the shame is the paralyzing element. Well, shame destroys. Shame kills, man. It's a killer, and it I don't think killer. people even like the word shame or yeah. fear. I, yeah. And especially, I'm from Philadelphia. You can't use the word fear. What am I afraid of? Yeah, mm. you're afraid. Yeah, you're afraid of admitting something. You're afraid of your feelings. You're afraid of your sensitivity. You're afraid you might be, you know, maybe you're gay. You know yeah. what I mean? There's so much fear That's that goes. And we, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But it's yeah. so covered up with this toughness and this. This exterior that's not true. Yeah. That's what I like about, again, the films. I love the films that can dive into who we really are, right. not who we pretend to be. Right. And that's the one problem with some of the acting that goes on. It's just pretending. Sure. It's not being. Sure. And then what do you pi- find be your best role? Like, I, I really love you in Barry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's amazing that I know you here and then I know you <laughs> know you and I see you on Barry which is a, a big departure from you. That's a big departure from my normal wheelhouse. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And then how did that happen? Did you create the character that they created for you? Is it a combination? How does something like that and describe the character for people that haven't seen Barry and, or your work in that? Um, Barry's beautiful show put on with uh, by Bill Hader and Alec Berg. Um, I got a call from Sharon um, Bialy and Sherry Thomas, who casted me in a show called The Unit years ago. I was a door kicker. We were playing Delta Force operators. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like a dude. And she called me. She says, hey, we're thinking about bringing you in for this role. And I said, well, what is it? And she says, he's like a Bolivian Sammy Hagar. And I said, I don't know what that means. And so I looked it up, and I saw the Bolivians were not very tall people. Uh-huh. And Sammy Hagar likes to laugh, and he's kind of just like a kind of a free willy-nilly kind of guy. Sammy Hagar the singer? Sammy Hagar the singer. So I did a little research and watched some of his interviews. Okay, of all the yeah. people, I would not think of that Of all was the people. Okay. Of all the people. So yeah. I'm doing some research, and I go in, and I say, okay, just go for it. Just go in there and have fun. Okay. Just go in there and have fun. Make them laugh. And, but be grounded in that moment. So I went in, and I went straight to the thrift store. I got a little, uh, got a little Hawaiian T-shirt, and I got some flip-flops wow. and, some, and some linen. And I really dressed up. I I'd stopped dressing up for auditions, but like my life had kind of got to a space where, like I said, I was doing it for me again. It was after we sold the house and after I was like— You're just there to have fun. I'm just there to have so fun. You dressed man. up to have fun. I, I could use these clothes fun. at a party I, I, Whenever. Right. And I walked in, and she goes, Michael? And she had no idea who I was. I was wearing these sunglasses, diamond studded sunglasses. I had a little fake beard. I turned around to a little afro coming out the back okay. of my hat. And she was shocked. Do you go into, do you stay in character? Whole time. Whole time. She says, Michael, and you don't even answer her. Well, I got to give her the wink. Like, yeah, this, come on. I'm here for the 11 o'clock. Like, let's do it. Okay. And I did it. And she goes, You stayed in character, though. She says, Dude, this yeah. is great. I'm going to yeah. send this to Bill. 
Okay. She sent the bill. Uh, maybe two hours later, I got on a phone conversation. I ended up going back, and I pulled this accent out. Had no idea where the accent came from. It's like 14 different Latino people <laughs> I know from different countries, different <laughs> nations, different backgrounds, all of it, right? But I just pulled this something out. Like, it was going to be fantastic. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there was Crystal Ball, and I was just I – was, I was there. And then when NoHo came on – uh, and then Bill, we looked around the monitor, and he's like, <laughs> and Bill, and that was it. I, I, I think I was supposed to die first season yeah. at the end of first season, but I ended up living all the because way. Because they loved you so much. They loved it. Where's the part, of, this is the part I don't understand What's about this? Sammy Hagar is not gay. Your no, character's gay. My character was not gay. My character in the opening thing, I had a wife. I had no. th- I had three kids back in Bolivia. Yeah, you don't remember all that? You watched the show? See, I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see I it? I only saw it when I got to know you. And we got to see it. I yeah. watched it on purpose no, because. No, no, I was living a closeted life and no. I, 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 I had a whole family. I oh, was, they I, r- I was hierarchy back in Bolivia. I was a massive drug dealer, head of yeah. this huge cartel. And then um, Noho and I, uh, Noho Hank, um, um, Anthony, the amazing actor. Yeah. He started to kind of improv, so I started to improv, and I was like, I don't see any of what we're talking about on the page. <laughs> and I was getting a little bit like out of sorts because I usually play a tough guy, and I just kind of go back to the words, right? Mm-hmm. And so I just started to say, just go ahead. Just have yeah. fun with it. Listen, yeah. listen, be in that life improv. Be in the moment. Be in the moment. Like you're just in this, yes. p- it's this podcast. That's it. You only your the second p- podcast. By only the, the second podcast, wow. by the way. Maybe my last. <laughs> 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 because uh, you can do yeah, no better. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Forgot exactly. to fill that part. I, 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 I've, I've you, reached the top. You reached the pinnacle um, of, of podcasting. But yeah, man, Bill loved it, and they liked the relationship. There was a great moment between Anthony and I where we just kind of did a little how we looked at each other when they just said do that. Yeah. And Bill went, oh wow, there it is. And mm. and then you know I found out later that we're going to make this character gay, and you know not gay. He's just he's he's in love with people and life and energy and you know my whole family was back in Bolivia because my family sent me out here yeah. to start the cartels and mm-hmm. I have this energy and this person that we're kind of bonding with mm-hmm. he happens to be a male um, yeah we end up falling in love together yeah and, I mean it was a beautiful tragic comedy dramatic story and it, but you evolved out of out of some sort of uh, some sort of reality within yeah. you and yeah I mean there is a part of me that yeah. is that is uh, sure very affable and um, right you know I'll tell you what it was, too. She said, because uh, I asked for a note, and she says, I want, like, Midnight Irby. And I was like, <laughs> not a lot of people get Midnight Irby, you know? Um, That's interesting. That's a great uh, – the casting director said this? She knew me. She knew I didn't me know for they fi- were that clever. <laughs> she knew me for five, six, seven, ten years. Like, oh, she, okay. like we partied, you know? Like oh, she, okay. She's she seen me you. at midnight, right? I want Irby. And midnight midnight Irby. Irby. And Midnight Irby, he's having fun. You know, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what you think. He's going to say exactly what he wants to say. And that's Midnight Irby. And she says, I want, like, Midnight Irby. And we just did it, and all of a sudden we're here, and, you know, the show's getting awards. And uh, I think it's really sent my career, talk about a turnaround, Yeah. um, from kicking in doors for 20 years. Like, I just had a conversation with some people at CBS, and they were like, would you be interested in a half-hour comedy? And Mm. I'm like, I would be interested in a half-hour comedy. Because you showed that color. Nobody has ever asked me if I would be interested in a half-hour comedy in 20 mm. years of acting. Mm. And because now they have seen me in a different light, because yeah. we're all just humans. We don't know what we know until we know, mm. right? Yeah. And that's a, it's a sad truth, but we don't know what we know until we see it or it's become a part of us. But There are a lot of clever people in Hollywood, though, I have to tell you, that I found that, that they can get so – like a Bill Hader can, and obviously this oh, casting yes. director can – but if I have to tell that's, you, that's I'm the sorry. higher level stuff. That's why yeah. it's a higher level show, right? Because there's a lot of people that just don't get it. They don't get the depth that it even takes to act, yeah. to become somebody and really immerse yourself in that character. That's amazing. You guys did improv because I was afraid to do it on a show that was created by an improv actress, Amy Poehler. I was mm, on mm. Parks and Recreation, yeah. and I show up on the set. I lines memorized. Oh yeah, uh, you uh, reporting for duty. You don't <laughs> want the writer to come out. I didn't write that. Right. You know what I mean? On your first day, right. I was playing this character, and it was a real character too. That was fun, but I stuck to the lines. And then this other guy I know, this actor, he starts. Uh, he starts doing. He did it five different ways. I go, what are you doing? He goes, that's the way we do it around here. I was yeah. I was so scared to do it. Yeah. I mean, do, did he literally? Did they give you permission to do that? Or I mean, because sometimes people do want you to stick with the line. You know, yes, they do. Definitely more so on the drama side, right? When it, when you're they really, you, yeah, because yeah. you're having to hit certain points and you're tying in all these different stories right. together. But with comedy, 
you don't you don't really know where you're at until you're laughing. You know, uh, they told me a very interesting thing in the editing room, you know, whether we do five, six, seven takes, when everyone is laughing in the room, that's the take they use because that's what's funny. Of course. You know, and yeah. on the improv side, I just realized that Bill was okay because, y listen, Anthony was already on the show. I was showing up as a guest star, mm. so I just kind of, you know, I, I'm not afraid to color out of the lines, but I, I, I don't want to get fired either. So I just kind of follow and see what everybody else is doing. I'm like, oh, screw it, we're improv -ing. All right, have some fun with this. Yeah, and wow. the more I went, and Bill just kept saying more, like more, and, more, and that's more. that's who you want behind the show. Oh yeah, you want more. somebody that, that really wants to bring out that texture in you and yeah. that, that depth. Yeah, it's it's so much more fun that way, and acting is so much more fun. But I just wish, uh, I j I wish there were more projects like that, more films like that. That's really that gets to the interest intricacies of life and. Yeah. You know, really, I, I, I just I think Taika Waititi is doing that as, as well. Like he's, uh, you know, like when you can really push that reality, but it's still based in a thing that is so like esoteric and but you still have a human feeling, yeah. you know, like there's I think there's some very funny, funny uh, creators out there right now. And, oh, yeah. And I think considering the past five years that we went through, um, people are really going to need a good laugh. Man, this is so compelling and interesting to me. I, 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 how about a little cliffhanger here? Uh, cliffhanger part three. <laughs> part three. What, That's what, all I got. What, what will Irby <laughs> say next? You should do narration. Part, part three. three. Part three. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> Stay tuned.